All right, today we're going to be painting my new lemon pumpkin seed pattern, but we're going to do something a little different. I'm going to do a repaint. Um, I get a lot of questions about how do you repaint a bait, how do you prep the body, and so on. <clears throat> and um, a friend of mine turned me on to one of these uh, huge square bills, so I ordered one online. It's Looks just like your 2.5 square bill, but this is like four and a half inches long and the hooks are huge. <clears throat> so, the first thing we're going to do is get the dangerous parts off. Get yourself some good split ring pliers. I got these at Fleet Farm. And let's get the hooks off. So, prepping the bag and the hardware off is probably one of the more time consuming and kind of labor intensive part. Painting is the fun part. Let's just get these hooks off. Okay, and there's a split ring here on the line tie. Get that off. You have a couple options here with the eyes. Is you could tape them off, but you got to be very accurate and cut around the eye. Or you can pop them out and put your own eyes in. Uh, these are kind of an odd size. Um, eyes I ha these are like eight millimeter. I have nine millimeter eyes, and I have seven. <clears throat> so I think what I'm gonna do is uh, I'm gonna pop these eyes out and then save them for later. I have a little pointy tool. You gotta be very careful. They don't glue these in very well from the factory. So I'm gonna just get in here, right here on the edge. There's a little lip there. Of course, not all baits will have that, but I just kind of find a spot that'll make it easier to pop that eye out. And get Try to get underneath the eye. Go around the other side here. Usually come out easier than that. There it is like that. Hopefully this side will come out easier. Pop. There it is. <clears throat> now, I don't use any kind of finish or solvent to take this off. They don't put much of a clear coat on here, so I just take some very light sandpaper and scuff it up. You want to scuff it so that your primer coat has something to stick to. And I, you go with light sandpaper because I don't want to sand off the detail on the body. Alright, and there's the, this is the body, lure body, that I got. I got a discount tackle, I think they're like $17.99. So when I paint these, I keep them for myself, I can't really sell them and you have to make much money. Well, maybe. All right, so just scuff enough to get the shiny parts off. A little more down here. All right, now he's kind of take a rag. Wipe the dust off. And now we're going to be ready to tape off the bill and prime. And here's a bait I did yesterday. Same body. It's a repaint. And they look really good. This is my neon crappie color. These are really fun to paint. Nice and big baits. All right, I'm going to tape off the bill and then we'll get priming. Now if you're used to painting just lure blanks, uh, it may only take a coat or two with, with white primer 
Um, this was going to take a few more coats because you want to hide the color underneath. I'm using Golden's High Flow, and High Flow means it's for airbrushing. Uh, this is their titanium white. Um, there is some spray can uh, primer white you can buy uh, that works just as well. Probably even better because it covers quicker. But um, I don't have any of that. So I'll do one coat and I'll show you how it doesn't cover real well initially. So it's going to take you a few coats and we're going to heat set in between each coat too. So that is thoroughly dry. I usually have my exhaust fan going. It's always important to have ventilation. But I think you'll have a hard time hearing me. I do. Okay, so there's my first coat. It covers pretty good, but you can still see the stripes and and some of the uh, yellow and the orange colors from the previous pattern. We'll heat set that. I'll do a few more coats. I won't bother you or bore you with the additional coats. And uh, we'll get back to painting the bait. Okay, I got my primer coats on. It's nicely covered. And if you're just starting out or refinishing uh, or re when you repaint factory store baits, go to the store, look in their bargain bin, and find some baits for buck or two and practice on those for a while. Uh, that's what I would do. Alright, so we're going to continue with our lemon pumpkin seed color and now we're going to do a pearlized silver. This is Aztec pearl silver. I've tried a lot of pearls and Aztec. Uh, spray is actually one of the best out of all the other pearls. I really usually don't have to thin it down. I get this at dingerbaits.com. So, yeah, it's not as thick as all the other pearls. So, we'll just do a generous coat of silver, pearl silver on this bait. If I do a couple light coats, heat set in between. HPCS. The nozzle is a 0.35. The spray is really nice. You'll see once we get into the detail work, I'm going to use my other Iwata, which is HPCH. It's a 0.3 nozzle. Great for detail work. I actually feel like I have a little more control. All right. There's the silver. I'm going to heat set that and we'll move right along. All right, our next color is going to be. Comart Opaque Hansa Yellow, and we're going to paint that on the belly and just about, not all the way up to the lateral line, but pretty close. <clears throat> I don't have a lot of pressure. These Comart paints are pretty much airbrush ready, nice and thin. I'm going maybe a third of the way up, maybe a little bit more. There we go. Don't take much. There we go. I may come up just a little bit more here on this side. The yellow is going to be my canvas for some of the pumpkin pattern detail. All right, I'll heat set that and we'll move along. All right, next we're going to go with a wicked color, detail black magenta. Detail kind of basically means more transparent, and wicked is 
a line from Createx, and it's more airbrush ready than just the straight Createx, which is made more for um, painting on fabric, shirts, things like that. So that's why it needs to be thinned. <clears throat> Alright, so with this black magenta, we're going to do a scale mask. And you can take a loofah or whatever scale mask pattern you have, you can wrap it around and clip it with these little alligator clips, but you also run the risk of scratching your bait. So here's a little hack, is I took a needlepoint loop, and they have different sizes at Hobby Lobby, and I stretched the loofah over the, the hoop. And then I just lay it right on top, but I need to get a little closer to the bait to do that. You want to make sure it's not out of frame for you guys. So we're going to lay this right over the bait and lightly spray my magenta. Just going right down to where it meets the yellow. side. Lay it right down onto the bait. The reason I like little transparent paints is now I can still see my pearl silver come through the top of the purple, or the magenta I should say. All right, a little more on the back. Good. Very subtle. And next, oops, I spilled. Next, um, we're going to add stripes. <clears throat> you can use a comb. You can use whatever stencil you may have for stripes. But I like to, well, at least for this color pattern, I like to hand paint my stripes. So if you're not comfortable with the airbrush, at least not comfortable enough with the airbrush control, you can use a stencil, but I'm just going to do three kind of V-shaped stripes. Just get the general outline, location, where I'm going to do it, and then come back and clean them up. Alright, do the same on the other side. Darken up your back with a little more of the magenta. Okay, now we're going to get into some pretty awesome detail. Okay, we're going to add kind of some pumpkin seed pattern. And here's a stencil I got from Anarchy Models in the UK. This one is number HS-42. There's two of them on here. One is a little different size but I cut them off so for ease of use. Uh, very flexible, durable, and they wash off nicely. Yep, all that paint buildup. So what we're going to do is I'm going to mix a couple colors here. I have um, Wicked Golden Yellow. And then I'm using an FW Ink color called Antelope Brown, which is similar to sepia. So if you don't have antelope brown, use a little bit of sepia and I mix these two together. It tones down that yellowish color a bit. So I mix all this together. Kind of makes, kinda, I don't know if you can see that color. Oh, yellowish green, brown, I don't know, but it goes, it <laughs> complements well with that yellow. Let's test the brush. Okay, 
Now, I'm going to use this and I'm going to spray the pattern mostly on the yellow part here. What I like about these stencils is they're flexible. You can bend them around odd shaped bodies. Not a lot of pressure. A little goes a long way. Oh yeah. See, yeah, that's a good color. Complements the yellow nicely. Anarchy stencils now for about six months now. It takes about two weeks to get once you order. Oh, I love that. Love the color and I love the pattern. It's great for crappies too. I, here's a bait I did yesterday that is a crappie, like a neon crappie, but same stencil, just use it a different way. All right. I like that. I like that a lot. Good color. I'm going to leave the belly yellow, but if you want, you can continue this pattern all the way around. The stencil bends nicely along the curves that you can spray and perfectly. I love it. Okay. Now we're to get into some finishing details. All right, now since the bait doesn't have a lot of detail, I'm going to add some fins, and this is uh, a fin and gill wheel from Insane Custom Stencils. Uh, very durable; you can wash it off. So here's the fin options around the edge, and then your gill plate details around the middle. And so what we're going to do first is, um, I got some black in my brush, and as you probably know, I got the eyes in already, and I'll show you why we do that here in a little bit. But it's a big bait, I wish I had um, bigger fins, uh, you can make your own if you need to, but I think I just the right size. So I'm going to lay this on the edge of the gill plate. And I'm going to spray just the outside edge of this stencil so the overspray gets in more than the paint. Let's go right along the edge, let the overspray get in there. And get yourself a little fin. Come around the other side. The same thing. Lay the fin where you want it. Spray just along the edge. Let the overspray do the work. And there's your fin. Now, with this, I like to do black eyes, but I use the original eyes and spray a little black over it. I won't paint it a solid black because I want a little bit of that pupil and a little bit of the red to kind of shine through. Um, I like using iridescent eyes for that actually, but I don't have iridescent eyes for this size bait. So I'm also going to do the gill mark. Same thing with the wheel. Lay it on the gill where you want it. Ah, forgot I gotta move it up a little bit here. Reset the bait.
come down along the edge of the stencil a little bit too. Just faint little black detail right there. Come around and do the other side. our black gill mark and now I'm going to paint the eyes in a little bit maybe not completely and then blacken up the nose blacken up this eye a little bit and then let's run some black down the spine and let some of that overspray enhance the black magenta. salon detail tools. I just dip it in the red and then dab a little dot right here on the edge of the gill plate mark. You don't have to do it but I like to add a little more color since there are some dark colors on here. Kind of breaks up everything. version of a lemon pumpkin seed. Now I'm going to clear coat this with um, Illumilite UV. Uh, you can use whatever works for you and uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you're not a subscriber, please subscribe. Thank you for watching.